Hello everyone, welcome to what if Issei was neglected and become the ultimate red dragon emperor of underworld part 7. Before we start please go support Dorita DK for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. Life 15. Falling into place. Issei and Akari sat up from the bed and looked at each other, then opened the blinds, only to see the downpour of rain surrounding them. Issei. Is it just me or does the rain love us? Akari. I think you're right Newt. Issei. Well, let's go and see what we learned from the books or unlock it. They walked downstairs and Issei got the books ready, while Akari got some food ready for them quick and fast when she came to him, she handed him a cup of coffee and some spicy scrambled eggs and bacon. Issei. Thank you Akari. Akari. Smiling it's no problem now come on read something. Issei. I think let's start with the book we first found. She nodded and he opened it, and there were a few more logs. Log 12, Mickey Hayadu of the Dragon Clan Protector of Shin Hayadu. It's been a week since we left Catherine with the princess, and we took the prince we decided to change his name and give him the name Issei. Sincere and honest with the name Hayadu backing him up, then he can be a strong and proud child. He's already made a friend named Darina Shido. She reminds me a lot of the princess my only worry is that he is spending a lot of time with her, when the princess and the prince are meant for each other, but only time will tell Mickey. Log 13, I believe that the Shidos figured out that we are from the underworld. They have a holy sword in their house playing dumb was the safest option, since we changed their memories of us in the beginning to protect Lord Shin, but as time went on, they grew suspicious of us in the long run Lord Shin was wrongfully punished, and Goru started beating him, then after that, he beat himself because he landed a hand on the young master we failed as his protectors, we don't think we can ever treat him like we used to before he's becoming like King Kendrick always rash and ready for a fight, I suppose the things are happening for a reason, I've also tried not to notice it, but Lord Shin has been blessed with the boosted gear of the Red Dragon Emperor. I wonder how things are going to play out, I hope he doesn't become a devil, because it means that he's serving people that's lower to him Mickey. Issei had to sit back and take it in for a bit and then looked at Akari, then pictured Arena and how they used to be. Akari. What does Arena look like? He looked at her took out his phone and showed a picture of Arena. Akari. Hmm, we do look alike kind of it's weird, it's like I almost have a double ganger, I think it's the eyes. Issei. If you ever meet her then I don't want you two messing with me. Akari. Never say never was there anything else. Issei. Yeah I think it's a log from Goru. He turned the page and saw more writing. Log 10, I've made a grave mistake by striking the young lord I never should have done it, I want to end myself because I did the one thing Catherine, Mickey and I promised not to do yet here we are. I don't expect him to forgive me, but I also hope that one day that he figures out that the world we live in wants him dead. But I'm just an old fool that has nothing better to do while I'm working than just hunt devils till late in the night, anymore I have no place at home. Mickey says the house has lost its home feeling I don't blame her, I'm at fault here I'll be around, but I don't think I can be involved anymore I'm not worthy being a substitute father for the young lord not anymore Goru. Issei. So that's why he was hardly at home anymore. Akari. What do you mean? Issei. He was distant after he hit me even when I asked to play sports or instruments, they showed interest, but they basically stopped being my family and just went back to being my protectors as they call it. Akari. That's not fair to you or them. Issei. No, it's fine, let's see what else is here. He continued reading aloud. Log 11, the young lord has taken up a hobby which we are happy to see it reminds us of his mother, but we can't bring ourselves to celebrate anything with him, we have just been making sure that he's safe in our home and streets, but I've seen the porn magazine in his room, I believe his dragon lust could be coming in, but it's too soon to tell Gauro. Log 14, he's become a devil we have absolutely failed he's become a member of the Grimmery family, as much as Runias would be happy that he's part of her family, the past doesn't change her first grandchild was part of the attack that killed our clan, along with the 72 pillars of devil families, we put up a good fight and killed a good portion of them, but now it's come full circle even the bales. I've taken a liking to him, Mickey and I decided to try and get him to come back, because none of them understand what's going on yet it's happening. We decided for the time being that he can be safe we looked into Serzich's and Rhea's, and they good nothing like the elders, I hope he doesn't have prolonged time with the devil elders they would know his dragon signature and try something against him, and we don't want that. But since the young lord is with some people we find worthy of watching him and hiding him in plain sight we clean up the house and going to Catherine, we are making what could be our last and final stand before we die, young Lord Shin. Issei you have made us proud in the man you've become sure the relationship we have with each other isn't good, but if you're reading this we have since pasted on and you learning about your lineage and your bride to be the last order we got from the late king of the Haidu family, is to make sure Shin and Akari are married, it was also the last order from her mother before she died that night all. Those years ago Catherine made sure Akari is safe and protected to the point she hardly knows any magic, because her heart is too soft to let her fight right now, maybe when she's older, but she's not ready for it, please help her be the queen and get her where she needs it Goro. Akari. Blushing while I um. Issei. 
Light blush we can talk about it later right now we need to see the rest of this through. They closed the logbook and took the book they found in Hawaii. They opened it, and the first page showed what looked like the symbol they had been seeing in the caves, Issei. Wait before I read this book pull up the pictures of the symbols. Issei started drawing them, and they all made a shape of a nine-tailed fox. Issei. I thought as much, looks like our next stop is Kyoto if all goes well. The shape was a nine-tailed fox with land surrounding it, Akari. Oh, cool I've always wanted to go live in the countryside for my whole life I've always wanted to see it, Issei. I've never been either if I was still in school then I would have gone this year before becoming a third year or as the start as a third year, but that isn't a worry right now let's see what this book is. He turned the page, and he grew blush. Akari. What's wrong why are you blushing? Issei. Blushing marriage certificate between Lord Shin Haidu and Akari Furman to be the next heads of the clan. She started blushing and took the book from him and looked at the document and it looked like she had steam coming off her head from the blush. Akari. Blushing wa? She handed the book back to Issei and went to go and splash her face with cold water. Issei carried on reading, and there was a symbol similar to what they found in the cave. He touched it and it was like a rush of memories came running back to both of them. Flashback, they could see the land they had, and the beautiful white castle walls and inside lived the five families, and how Akari and Issei were always together playing and having fun, then what Issei was constantly seeing whenever she nodded fast was when they got married. They saw a man standing in front of them which could only be Issei's father. Hendrik. My son you must protect her by any means necessary she's your wife if she cries you either hurt the person that made her cry and make sure she always has a smile on her face, no sad tears, only happy one smiles. Then the woman came to stand behind him. Don't tell my son-in-law anything he doesn't want to I have faith Kayako taught him well. Hendrik. Don't be like that Sora you know he's going to look after her well. Hendrik. Well, my son are you ready to see your wife? He saw Akari standing in front of him with a confused look on her face. Hendrik. Okay now Shin take her hands. He did so, Hendrik. Do you Shin Haidu promise to protect Akari with everything you have and to make her happy? Shin. Yes, Sora. Now Akari Furman do you promise to be nice to Nude and make sure to be loving to him every day? She smiled and started rapidly nodding. And everyone cheered for them when they hugged each other. Flashback end. It hit them like a truck the memories came running they were breathing heavily and when he looked at her she was breathing fast. She ran to the bathroom and locked the door. Issei closed the book and went to the door he gently knocked on the door and heard her voice. Akari crying go away. He took a deep breath and sat down with his back against the door. They say. Just talk I listen. He could hear her crying and moving around. Akari. Sniffles are you still there? They say. Yes. Akari. How can you be so calm about this they had us married when we were so young, yet we didn't know it at the time, and now they just expect us to fall in love and be happy, it's not fair sure I'm upset because I lost you, but that was different you were my best friend, even now though we are friends again we different people we aren't the same anymore and it's scary, because we have so much history and neither of us knew, thunder, Issei, do you know what I think, Akari, yay, Issei, my whole life was a lie nothing went well, it's always been a struggle for anything I've done or did, then you know how I feel about my last relationship, the things I hoped would never happen happened, then there's another woman in my life which I wouldn't mind having as my mate, then there's you and someone I thought was you, that also has a place in my heart, it's struggle to even think about because no matter what I do someone is getting hurt, even though Drake said dragons have multiple mates, I don't see myself having more than one mate, and she's been marked by me already, if you feel frustrated to imagine how I feel, nothing is going our way at all, yet it's already happened, Akari. You still have a choice, I don't. They say. I suppose you're right, but that doesn't mean it's not going to change things or always changing think about it last year. Did you ever think you would be going on an adventure with your supposed husband? He heard her chuckle a bit which made him smile knowing he was making her feel better. Akari. I suppose you're right, but still we've been lied to hell I don't even know if you're lying to me right now. They say. Tell me what reason I do have to lie, that's one thing I don't do unless it's needed, I've always spoken my mind when it comes to 90% of things, and I mean them I never break a promise and I don't intend to. Akari. You told me you promised the other girl that you'll never leave her alone yet here you are comforting me, and she thinks you're dead. They say. That is circumstantial and right now it's better this way I'll go and help her if needed, but right now this is bigger than that we need to figure out who we are no more just claiming to be a king and queen, means nothing if you don't know the full story, and it's clear we still have enemies wanting our heads the only people I can trust right now are you and Hancock, with what Catherine Mickey, and Goru I can't trust anybody else Runia's is different, she's just supporting me, I have no reason to trust her fully, which is why I'm cautious to what I say to her, Akari. I guess you're right. He heard the door unlock. She opened the door and he looked back and up at her. She then held out her hand. Akari. Let's make a deal. Issei. About what? Akari. 
We support each other no matter what we find out right now you're the only person I can trust with my life, and right now it's the same for you. Hancock isn't with you right now and all you have is me with you, so the deal will be based on the woman in your life, you and I have no choice we married, and I know I'm not your number one, but I wouldn't mind sharing I believe that you can handle it, but don't go overboard with it it'll support you if you support me. He stood up and took her hand. They say. Okay that works it's a deal. They shook hands. Bakari. And you going to explain to the other woman that I'm your first legal married wife. She wiped her tears and had a smile on her face trying to hide her laugh. As she saw the oh shit face Issei made realizing what he has to do. Issei. Dang it. Bakari. He but another question your name. Issei. We can figure that out just call me Shin or Newt, but I don't think I'll be using Issei much only with the others. She smiled and nodded. Bakari. Now let's go and see what else those books have to offer. We still have the book of Ver to look into. Issei. Yeah, let's go. They went back to the books and started piecing them together. In the underworld somewhere, we find Serzichas sitting with Seraphal and Ajuka with Michael Azazel with Rias and her peerage, Sona and hers with Saji in the room. They are looking at the footage from the island of Hawaii, of how two people managed to easily take what they had been taking way too long to get they managed to get a close-up of the male and female. Azazel. Kind of looks like Issei. Serzichas. We saw him in person sounds like him too, but the tone is different with how he talks, but you're right, but it's not, but they seem to know what this stuff is we know the male name his name is Shin, after taking out the guards they say before they lost consciousness, they heard the girl call him Shin, and we also saw her in person, Seraphal. What concerns me more is the abilities look. They watched as Shin took out the guards, and they had seen these moves before even power. Serzichas. Hm I checked with Tannen because I know those movements all too well, and it's confirmed it's dragon techniques look at the markings. They zoomed up on his arms and the girl's arms the markings were the same as the ones it says had there been an 80% resemblance to them, but they weren't his and the girl's matched with a 90% too, when it says first started as the light marks. There he is. So, what are they doing there? And what did they take? As she stepped forward, she had to hold her stomach a bit the baby was getting big. Serzichas. We believe it's the sword and spear look as the door opened. The clip played and they saw Shin and the girl walk out with a sword and spear, and they left with it, then they changed the vision of the camera, and they saw the amount of magic power Shin had with the sword on his back, and how little the girl had compared to Shin, and how much the spear was producing, then watched them take photos of the painting, then left with a red magic circle, and how there was no magic coming from the area, Azazel. I know that sword it's the Dragon King sword it's made of dragon teeth from the first dragon to exist, way before Great Red was ever born. Serzichas. Hm I know about that, dragon clan power beings that could even take on any god in a fight and win. Michael. Indeed, those beings were made by dragons for dragons they are the embodiment of an ancient dragon. Dangerous too. Sona. Then what about Saji and Issei if he was here? Seraphal. Stronger they were never human, to begin with, they have a direct link to dragon's blood, and it runs through their veins they stood strong, but our great-grandparents lead an attack and hit them during mating season when they were the weakest. All 72 pillars were involved they wanted the power we have today, but looking at it, if those two are part of the clan and they are of royal blood, we could expect them to attack us and wipe us off the face of the underworld, which is a massive problem. Rias. Why weren't we ever told about this? Serzichas. It's not something we as the current kings are proud of mainly the Grimmeries our ancestor was close to the current king at the time and was a very good friend to the clan, we would have been higher on the ranking because of a deal that sadly fell through I'm not sure what the deal was, but Rinias knows of it and if she finds them she's going to probably want to make things right with them if she hasn't already. Saji. I have a question if you don't mind. Seraphal. Go ahead. Saji. Let's say those two are royal blood what should we expect from them? Serzichas. Issei had these abilities where he could control people or use his Zetan to make himself stronger or even predict movements, they would have a higher range, they could possibly make the whole Grimmery territory freeze and make us kill ourselves with little to no struggle. Akeno. I see why they were considered strong. Saji. But here's what I don't get only a select few dragons can gain those, and I'm barely even getting predictions right with Dragon Rage, hardly getting close to Zetan, unless I'm boosted from Issei. It's a difficult thing to do not even Tannen can't get it right like Issei. He was the first and only person Tannen has met to get so far with it. Serzichas. I don't know but one thing is for certain these two are very dangerous. Zenovia. I like his rings they look so cool. They zoomed onto the rings and Serzichas Seraphal and Azazel had wide eyes seeing the rings, they were beyond shocked. There he is. Something wrong Zetches. Serzichas. One of those rings, it belongs to our ancestor why does he have it, she never gives the ring to anyone, so she knows of their existence already. They felt uneasy. Azazel. And that other ring belongs to one of the most beautiful women in the underworld Bo Hancock that showed a picture of her and where she stays. And the list of things she has done. Azazel. 
She's one of the worst women to be on her bad side. She turns people to stone if you piss her off. She is the queen of the woman only island. They hate men. They kill any men that come onto their land recently. A man wanted to kill them to take their island. And they slaughtered all of them with no mercy. And recently they seem to have gained more strength expanding their land in the north of the underworld. A chill went up their spine seeing how powerful she is. Sir Awful. I've been to Amazon Lily. But it's really dangerous to be there I at least made a deal with her to supply her with some information. So she stays up to date with things in exchange we leave her alone when she lets me at least get her information. I can call her. Serzich's. Sure. Seraphol called her, and she appeared in projection form. Hancock. What is it? The look she gave them was unsettling. Seraphol. Hey there Hancock but by any chance did you give a ring to someone? They watched her get a blush and swing side to side. Hancock. Lovey dovey oh my dear husband, why are the devils after you, you should call me to tell me about these things. They were all shocked. She then stopped and realized what she was doing. Hancock. Cow yes I gave him a ring to be in contact with me, it also allows him to get around in certain places in the underworld that wouldn't let him in like the land controlled by the people below me in power. Michael. How does that work first? Hancock. On this side of the underworld everyone has a reputation and something significant will help you get something you need or respect something like a ring will bring so much fear into some that you would think they are murderers. I gave him the ring so he could use my name to get into places that he wouldn't be allowed in. Serzich's. Can you tell me how he has my ancestor's ring? Hancock. I don't need to tell you anything Runias has her own reasons go ask her. Serzich's felt a bit of fear when she said the name Runias. Hancock. I need to go. She cut the call and they all just all looked at each other. Serzich's. If he managed to get the support of my ancestor and her someone who hates men, then they can only be part of the dragon clan. We need to prepare for worst case best case anything and everything we may have a one-sided war on our hands. And I don't like the fact Hancock just clearly stated husband about him. They all nodded and left to go make preparations. But Hancock, as she put down, she decided to call a say. And within a few seconds he answered she first looked confused when she saw the black hair blue eyed person pop up, and then she realized what he did. Hancock. Ice what's going on I just had the devil kings call me. They say. Well some things happened, and it turns out my name is Shin, and Runia's was right, I am part of the dragon clan. She could see the look on his face he was looking in better shape and spirits. Hancock. I'm glad smiling. They say. But how did the devil kings find out? Hancock. I'm not sure but they don't know it's you that much is clearer they were asking about the rings, and I let them panic about the fact that I know Runia's. They say. Thanks that helps a lot how's things on your side. Hancock. Boring it is snowing here, and I miss waking up next to you. They say. Don't worry about it I'll come visit soon. Hancock. Who's the girl next to you? He looked to his side and saw Akari putting together some cave paintings. They say. Promise you won't get mad. Hancock. Okay I promise. They say. Well, she is my first legal married wife we were married as children, and then we were separated soon after, so she's been tagging along with me while we try and figure out what are we going to do. Hancock sad I see. He could see the sadness on her face, but he wasn't going to toss aside her feelings he wanted to have her happy, and after talking to Akari, he had to consider her feelings as well. They say. Oh well I have you, how do you feel about sharing? He could see her eyes light up. Hancock. Blushing oh um I suppose it's fine, why do you ask? They say. No reason, oh and before I forget my real name is Shinase was a name to hide me, so if you start hearing things about a Shin, then it's me. Hancock. Okay I'll keep an ear out smiling. Akari. Hey nude I found something. They say. Okay I'll check it out now, see you hexy smiles. He put down and Hancock just started blushing she put her hands over her face and started squealing in excitement rolling over her bed and alerting the whole island thinking something was wrong. But they say. He and Akari spent the whole day putting together the cave painting to make sure everything was telling a story. Akari. Look here someone gave a nine-tailed fox a scroll here. She pointed to what looked like a scroll and she was right it was most definitely a scroll. They say. And here it looks like Amazon Lily where Hancock is and there's another book for us. He pointed at the book inside the volcano, and it was under all the magma. Akari. Looks like I get to meet her in person. They say. Hmm but Kyoto first. Akari. Okay lead the way. They packed up their things and got ready. Greg. You know things seem to be adding up now what if they start leading us in the wrong direction. They say. Then we handle it. Greg. And the girl before you go to Kyoto perhaps stay here for a bit and teach her how to fight you can't handle all the fighting alone, she also needs to learn. They say, but, Greg. It's easy now, but there is still a chance that something could go wrong and she needs to fight for herself. They say. Fine, hey Akari. Akari in the other room yay. They say. Stop packing we not leaving. Akari. How why? She looked confused as she came into the room. They say. Grab your spear we going to start training you in fighting. She got excited and ran to go and get it. 
He then grabbed his sword, then remembered he had Ascalon on him. He brought it out and held the words next to each to each other. I say. Well dad's sword looks better and sharper, but now I have two strong swords I'll use my scale sword as well, Greg. So you going to use three swords? Seriously, I say. Yeah why not could be fun, and when Zetches made me learn it wasn't that bad to perform, Dryag. Well then who am I to stop you, but I wonder what it will do to the armor if you put your father's sword into the gear, I say. One way to find out. He put both swords into his gauntlet and watched as the scales all became sharper, and even his claws he brought out his wings, and they even had some shaper points to them, he then made them go away, and Akari came out in different clothing ready to fight, I say. First things first do you know how to use that? Akari. Happy not at all, I say. Okay anything you have in mind about fighting with it forget it and don't bother we are doing this my way, Akari. Okay, time skipped two months of training. Issei had broken Akari and made her a fighter she was next to useless with any tools or weapons, but Issei trained it out of her, and she got better and more proactive, while using them he first taught her to hand and got her training with him, so she can build some strength, so she's not easily taken down while practicing with a spear, he was just attacking her with his sword, and she got frustrated, and blew him away with a large gust of wind, when both of them realized what she did, he had her start with basic magic cues, and she was excited while doing this, she found she could pull the wind together, condensing it to protect her, and while doing so, she can use it in various ways to assist others, such as defense and attack. Issei had thought about some smoke to see if she could control that she was curious to made some smoke leave his mouth, and she tried to control it, but it just phased past her, she then started using her wind to try and hold it in one place, but it wasn't the smartest use case for it, but she was happy nonetheless to learn some magic. Akari. Hey Shin. Issei. Hmm. Akari. Why don't you just go by Shin now and make Issei your middle name or something? Issei. That's not a bad idea, but at the same since keeping the name Issei is just keeping me sane, I'm having a whole identity crisis, and I'm trying to not have that happen, but maybe the middle name being Issei wouldn't be so bad, or I can even have Shin as the middle name I've been Issei for so long it just doesn't feel right. Akari. Oh well you deal with that one way or another I'm still calling you nude. Issei. Yeah but then again, this nude is training you to make you stronger. She grew a blush and threw a pebble at him. Akari. Blushing shut up. Issei. But I think I'll use Shin more it sounds strong and kind at the same time. Akari. Well Shin does mean gentleman, heart, and advance with a whole lot of other meanings, so it's your choice no one can or is going to stop you. Shin. Then I'm Shin to say hi to. Akari. It's nice to meet you Shin. Shin blushing keep quiet. They both laughed and hugged each other. Akari. Dang your hair grows fast I can see your brown roots coming in. Shin. We can handle it later now come on let's go to the land of Kyoto. He smiled and she smiled back at him. Life 16. The land of Kyoto and the nine-tailed fox. Shin and Akari packed up and decided to relax for the rest of the week. They weren't in any rush to get to Kyoto. Shin decided to keep his hair tied up like a samurai and just continued to keep the look his brown hair started to show in his roots, but he wasn't phased. Akari decided to leave her hair in a braid to keep her hair out of her face. They then teleported to Kyoto and as they got there Issei had to bite his tongue and pull Akari aside and keep them hidden. She was looking into his eyes and he did too, neither of them broke eye contact and they were breathing heavily. He pointed to the side, and she looked and she saw, Irina's and Aviva Kibasaji, and some girls of Sona's peerage were present, he then saw Roswis and Azazel there as well. He grabbed Akari's hand, and then they quickly went to another spot trying not to be noticed by them. Akari. Dude what's going on why don't you want to see them, Shin. It's better if they think him dead right now it won't bring anyone any good right now might just get them killed, Akari then let's blend in again. They went to a traditional store and bought some clothing. Shin went for a more traditional look with Yakuda that he could wear over his tighter clothing. He also got some armbands, which also helped him blend in more with a mask that he could pull up when he wants to. Akari went for a shrine made outfit, making her look more traditional. Shin. This works well for me, but are you going to be able to fight in that? Akari. That's the point I'm going to go and blend in with the shrine maids, and then you can go and explore the temples, and then we meet up in a day or two and compare what we find. Shin. You sure I don't want you alone for long, Akari. Don't stress I'm sure it's going to be fine I can handle myself well enough to not cause many problems, Shin. Alright be safe. He kissed her on her forehead and then went off running. She giggled and went towards a shrine. But Shin, he jumped up on top of a building and watched his old friends walk towards the hotel where they were staying. He made a mental note and then went towards the forest while walking around. He dogged an arrow and cut it with his sword, then looked where it came from, Shin. He looked and saw the yakai looking at him ready to fight. He then saw a small fox girl land in the middle. Angry you there give back my mother. As she screamed at him her tail stood on end he could feel the anger towards him, but he knew they have the wrong person. Shin. Who's your mother? 
I don't know her. They started shooting more arrows at him out of anger, and he let off his zetan and had them stuck in place, and took out all the arrows they looked shocked, as he was releasing more and more to make his point known, that the last two months had been getting so good at it, everything became second nature to him, and Akari only started picking up on the ability to use it as well. Shin. Don't piss me off he'll end all of you in seconds. He stood looking at all of them he then looked back and saw Kiba Zenaviva and Arena running towards him with their swords, he pulled out his father's blade and held them all from attacking him. Zenaviva. We won't let you harm the Yakai. They added more pressure, but it wasn't phasing Shin at all he kept eye contact he didn't have his contacts and they could see his eyes they started to get confused, then he pushed them all back. Shin. Don't involve yourselves with the Dragon Clan Grimmery family you'll only get hurt. He disappeared and they lost track of him. Shin. Well nice way of seeing them after nearly a whole year don't you think, Greg? Hmm, but that girl was a nine-tailed fox yakai, and she's looking for her mother, Shin. I'll look into it. He landed in a tree and watched the yakai run away, but then listened to his friends. Tiba. Those eyes. Zenaviva. It can't be he died a few months ago, and the hair color isn't the same, and the face shape is off it is not the same. Arena. But that strength I've only seen it on one person, if there are more people like I say popping up we're in for it, we should let Riaz and Azazel know he's here, and the girl is also probably here. They nodded and carried on with their walk. Shin watched them from the distance as a mirage walked away, trying to think of how he could make this work for him. Shin. Well let's see what I find out tonight. He continued exploring and found a place that looked like it was a struggle here, and then took note of the area itself, and found it to be on a pathway leading to a few temples. He went towards them and found the girl again talking with a few guards, girl. What are we going to do we can't handle people with power like that we are too underpowered to even put up a fight, what do I do? Shin. Then don't make enemies with them. They looked at him walking closer towards them without a care in the world, and his eyes didn't say anything good either, over time his eyes became more calm and relaxed, but there was a downside only people like Akari and Hancock would be able to tell what his mood is else, everyone else would only see him as constantly angry, girl. How did you find us? No human can find this place, only Yakai and Shin. The supernatural can find this place, yeah I know I am supernatural, now I'm looking for a nine-tailed fox, she should have a scroll for me. They all looked shocked that he knows about the scroll. Girl. How do you know about that? Shin. Look I'm not sure if you know the dragon clan and I'm the new king, I want all the information I can get to bring my clan back to power and kill those that oppose me. Girl. Well, we can't help you sadly only my mother knows where it is and she's gone missing. Shin. What's your name you can call me Shin the Dragon, girl. My name is Kunu the Princess of the Yakai, Shin. Look I'll help and try and find her, get all the help you can, but you'll be seeing more of me do I have permission to explore the area. Kunu. Sure, if you can find my mother it would be much appreciated, Shin. Sweet I'll come let you know what I can find, there is a girl in the city that is platinum blonde purple eyes, she is the new queen, if the guard see she needs help if I'm not already handling the problem. He then opened his hand and made a fire. Shin. Now then let's go. He took off into the sky, and he didn't find any caves only a lot of temples in the mountains. He looked for symbols that could help him, and didn't find any it was slowly getting dark, and he sat on top of a building in the area, and looked at the stars thinking about what could have happened here. Shin. Nothing is adding up I'm confident we are in the right place, that symbol was a nine-tiled fox, so why aren't there any clues for us to find? He then heard a familiar voice and listened. Azazel. Well, this is different I didn't expect him to be here what was he like. He took out a notepad and pencil ready to make some notes. Gibba. Strong yet faster than anything I've seen. Arena. He's got that dragon Zetan thing Asay had, and it's stronger way way stronger he held the three of us back with one arm, and what looked like a lot of yakai in one place, then threw us all in different places, then he left and didn't leave trace behind. Zenaviva. That sword is something else it's so strong I don't know if the others felt it, but when we clashed the shock from that only affected us, I saw it in his eyes he wasn't phased by the clash, my arms were tingling so much they still feel a bit weird now, Kiba. Hmm you're right, but I can't get over the fact that now he has brown eyes, Arena. Has right they look just like his says, Azazel. Brown eyes this time hey weird the original note say blue eyes perhaps his body is changing, I'll have to take more notes on this nothing is off the table yet, Seraphal. But the footage we have of him showed blue eyes, same as the girl Shes got purple eyes almost looks like Arena just platinum blonde, Saji. Whatever he is I'll handle him. During all this time Saji has been training hard trying to get to Issei's level, but for the life of him, he can't get his Zetan right it either works, and he gets bad results or it just doesn't happen, but his rage on the other hand he has a decent grasp on it, Momo. Hey how's Ria's I heard about the miscarriage. Shin's eyes widened when she said this, he didn't know she was even pregnant, and she was alone his heart started beating fast. Arena. Sad she's okay now Akeno and Kaneko are watching her she hasn't been the same since she believes she let Issei down, I mean we all do. Seraphal. 
But it wasn't her fault it was us leaders. Azazel. Still I think was all the stress of the dragon clan coming back for revenge, and the fact to say wasn't with her for it, Gibba. Why didn't we try and help him though? Sir Awful. The elders saw the video before sending it to Serzich's, and when they order something we need to follow, it has always been like that, Arena. Well, an innocent man died, I think something needs to change don't you think, Sir Awful. Hm Serzich's and I have been trying to make things like the other side of the underworld they live a more peaceful life, not needing to stress like we have. Where the order of the elders is the law, they live in a semi-law free world, the only thing that matters is your power status, which is why Hancock is so dangerous, Azazel. Well, I think we need to discuss Shin if he's good or bad, but I mean I wouldn't blame him for wanting revenge, I say he has every right to, but if he can be reasoned with it would be better, Sir Awful. Come on let's go and see the young princess she needed some time to recover from when she attacked Shin in the forest, they nodded. Shin. So Riaz was pregnant my god I'm an ass. He followed them to see what their plan of action was so he can follow them and see if he could get Kunu mother back, he was gently gliding behind them, listening to them talk in hopes he could figure something out, Azazel. We need to put finding the queen first she maintains things here literally there are underground monolines, which she continues to keep maintained too much is bad and too little worst case, but without proper care, things could spiral out of control. Dibba, then what's the first course of action? Sir Awful. You all should just enjoy your holiday you only get this once, we will let you know what's going on. They made their way to the temple and found Kunu standing in front of the temple. Kunu. Hello everyone I am Princess Kunu it's nice to meet you all. Arena. Oh you're so cute. Dibba. How are you feeling after today? Who knew? I'm fine I wasn't hurt only those with me were. They all nodded. Sir Awful. These will be the ones to help find your mother is there anything else we should be aware of while we are here? Who knew? Um yes look up, Hess too. They looked up and saw Shin hovering above them looking like he was hunting them. His eyes glowing in the sky they could see the power he has over them. He landed near them and they got worried because they didn't know what he could do yet. Shin. Look stay out of my way and things will be fine. They nodded. Shin. Kunu you do know there was a struggle literally 30 meters away from the temple entrance right, Azazel. What did you find? Shin. Nothing Azazel just that her scent goes from that door of the temple, then it disappears, you're the sacred gear expert is there a gear that could maybe slow down time or make another dimension, because that is the only way I see her going missing with that little of a struggle. They were shocked he knew who Azazel was, and it's not a common thing to know that he likes sacred gears and studies them, Azazel. How do you know I'm an expert, Shin? I just do, now talk old man. He had authority in his voice they didn't want to piss him off more. Azazel. Geez yes there is one, but it hasn't been recorded recently yet, Shin. Well, it's here now look I'll be around and handle anything the rest of you go enjoy your holiday. He was about to leave, Seraphal. Wait Shin. He stopped and looked back, Shin. What is it Seraphal Leviathan? It shocked them again that he knew them. Seraphal. Why did you take the sword? Shin. It was my late father's sword, and the spear was my wife's mother's spear tell Serzich's and Ajuka that they better watch out, I have a bone to pick with their families including yours, and what is left of the 72 pillars of the underworld. They made a tornado of fire turned into a dragon, and sped off at a high speed faster than any dragon they had seen. Azazel. He called it, the kid has some anger against you guys. Sir Awful. That's what I was worried about. They said bye to the princess once back at the hotel Azazel informed Serzich's about their encounter with Shin, and he wasn't happy about it, Serzich's. This was wanted to avoid, Azazel. Hmm, but here's the real kicker the kid knows us I don't know if it's a good thing or not, but we should be careful around him, he's willing to help the princess find the fox queen we don't know why, but I'll find out for you, Serzich's. That would be great thanks, Serzich's sat back down with his family, Serzich's. He knows who the devil kings are, Benalana. Oh my this is bad what are you going to do? Serzich's. I don't know, how is Rias? Ziotix. She's fine better, but this whole pregnancy thing was a lot on her. Benalana. I don't think we should push for any marriage, yet I think it will hurt all of us. Raphia. My baby has been so sad without his uncle. Back in the overworld, Shin then went to go and check on Akari and found her in the temple waiting for him. Akari. Look who has separation problems now. Smiles did you miss me that much? Shin. Hey I made a promise to your mother to look after you, and I'm doing that if I just had to leave you be then what husband would I be? Akari. Still a good one, but anyway did you find anything? Shin. The person we need was kidnapped recently, and I had to talk to my past, but they don't know it's me, yet I can't change eye colors now they might catch on, I was wearing the mask the whole day, so they didn't get to see my full face. Akari. Hmm that is troubling, but I did find a symbol here showing that we are in the right place. Shin. Show me I want to know if I'm looking for something wrong. She nodded and took him to the temple, and there he saw the symbol right there he touched it, and the memories of Catherine came running to him about talking to the fox queen. He nodded and messed her hair up and she pouted at him. Akari. Pouting what was that for? 
Shin. For finding the symbol good work now be safe and be on the lookout for something that disrupts the area, there is either a time sacred gear or dimensional one at play here. I also got some of the Yakai guards to at least help you in the unlikely event you get overwhelmed. She nodded with a determined face, he smiled and gave her a quick kiss, and then he left again. During the two months they spent training they grew very close, and they agreed to be a couple as husband and wife, they haven't gone past kissing, but she doesn't pressure him into anything, because she knows that Hess still misses Ria's and doesn't want to replace her, she was and always be his number one, but she does enjoy the affection he does give her. The next day he was in the forest busy eating something when he saw someone walking around drunk, he stopped eating and the food fell out his mouth when he saw her walking, it was Ross with she was already drunk, and it wasn't even midday yet, he checked the time a few times before. He quickly went to her and helped her. Shin. Roswis you okay? Roswis. Sad drunk no, I'm not my master is hurting so much it's not fair she lost her baby of the man she loves. Shin. How far along was she? Roswis. Sad drunk she was about 4 months the baby didn't look like it was going to have a devil pregnancy, but we accepted that once the miscarriage happened, she became a mess all over again, she nearly killed herself because of it. Shin. How's Ria's now? Roswis. Sad drunk she's fine hick a friend of ours is watching over her currently. Shin. How was it when Issei died? Roswis. Sad drunk miserable, no one has smiled since he died then when we thought we could watch his child grow, it brought back some happiness, yet that didn't happen either. Shin. I see, how much did you drink? Roswis. Sad drunk I had a shot with Azazel. To prove I'm not a lightweight. Shin. Is he still there? Roswis. Sad drunk him. He helped her and took her back to the bar he still had his mask down and walked to Azazel where Kiba and Saji were sitting with him. Shin. Azazel. The way he said his name made him think it was Issei he turned back and saw Shin holding Roswis. The other two couldn't take their eyes off they saw Issei's face, but it still wasn't the same. Azazel. Sorry about that Shin we didn't realize she wandered off. Shin. Yay. He placed her on the chair, set her down gently and let her down so she could rest. Shin. Keep an eye on her she's talking about her master humans can't find out what we are. He then left leaving them in shock as he walked the world started to turn black and white. He wasn't phased he thought that this would be the case, and this is how they got the fox queen he raised his mask and stood not phased. The others all came running and found him standing looking at the people in front of him. Hiba. Shin what's going on? Shin. Clueless, it just happened, and they are in front of us seem to be the ones here. Arena. Well what do we do? Shin, get ready to fight and don't engage it's all handled already. They all got ready, and Azazel then landed with Roswis in his arms. Azazel. So you were right kid nice going. Shin. Yeah don't do anything one more minute. They nodded and their enemies came closer to them. Who are you, you weren't on the list. Shin. I'm just here what do you want? Well, we are here to attack the red dragon's friends. Shin. But he's dead what point does that make? It's like killing a lion tribe when they already suffering enough. Well that's the whole point. Bang. The large solided block of wind fell on them crushing them. They didn't see where the attack came from, but a girl landed in form of Issei making a hurricane level wind attack, knocking all the enemies back they looked at her and were shocked. Akari. Sorry I'm late dear didn't think I would be able to jump from the shrine to here in one go. Shin. It's fine Akari. She smiled and nodded. Akari. So, what now? Shin. We fight. He pulled out two swords one sword shocked them it was Ascalon, and only Issei had it. And placed one in his mouth. Azazel. Hey Shin how did you get that? Shin. I found it in a cave why? Azazel. No reason. He set the blades alight and covered himself with scales. And Akari did the same as the enemies got up they were attacked by two dragons the leader was forced to run away. Because he wasn't expecting Shin and Akari to be there and to be this powerful. When the dimensional spell was broken things looked back to normal. Shin made the swords disappear and Akari put the spear on her back and it retraced itself and became smaller. Akari. Go no fun. She stuck her tongue out and she messed up her hair. Shin. Fighting isn't meant to be fun. Azazel. Amazed what the hell are you two? He could see it in their eyes they were strong the girl even had more power than she did when they first saw her on the video feed. Zenaviva. Thank you for helping us. Arena. Yeah we appreciate it. Shin. Aha Azazel tell me something, do you know anything we don't yet? Azazel. Come to a safer place with fewer people around. Shin. Fine. They followed them Shin took his mask down and Arena and Zenaviva couldn't stop looking at him. Shin. First time in like a year, one would think they would recognize me. Greg. Your facial shape has even changed from the dragon use if you weren't banished, then they would have seen the change happen progressively, but since the time frame it has almost too much. Shin, I see. They came to a room, and all sat down Shin took off his top, leaving him with his chest bare with the covering around his arms, and his markings clear for them to see they were a bit taken back from the large amount of scars littered on his body, but that was for another day. Azazel. Okay before we begin how did you find Ascalon in a cave it was first with a close friend of ours. Shin. 
I don't know I was walking around a cave and found it. They felt sad thinking that things were right, but it wasn't. Azazel. I see, so this is what we know that group leader is called Kokoa. he's a human with sacred gear, he's part of the hero faction, I'm starting to believe they pushing their limits, they have been a quiet group and never been this proactive ever, Shin. Okay do you know if he's working with people called the Chaos Brigade? Hiba. How do you know them? Shin. They have been involved in things long before you even realize I believe they had a hand in getting our clan killed, Azizel. What do you know about that I'm curious? Shin. I know enough, Bakari hit his arm. Bakari. Don't be like that, be nice, Shin. Fine we know that the Serzich's great-grandparents along with Serafal's grandparents were involved with the rest of the 72 pillars, led by the so great elders who wanted more power and killed our clan, Azazel. But how are you alive I swear your eyes were blue to top it off as well, Shin. We have been changing our look now and again since we are being hunted, we both had protectors watching over us making sure we lived close to normal life, but now they dead, we have been following the clues they left for us, so we can figure out who we are and what we need to do, but I'm killing the devil elders they caused this, so I'm making sure they never come back. Azazel. A fair goal, but what do you mean figure out who you are? Akari. They wiped our memories when we're kids we lead fake lives, and with each of the things we find we get a fragment to gain some memories back with more information on our clan and what they stood for, Arena. I'm sorry you had to live through that, Shin. It's the life we need to live on and make sure things don't lead back to the problems at hand, Azazel. I know your rings and what they do, but my question is how you survived Amazon Lily, Shin. I'm not answering that I don't intend to give all my secrets, I don't trust you enough for that, Tiba. Fair, Shin. Look once we are done here and get our scroll we leaving, Azazel. You mean the scroll of power? Shin. I don't know, all the rock paintings and symbols in Hawaii lead us here for it, so we are here to get it back. Akari showed them the pictures and drawings they made. Azazel. I'm surprised that cave where the sword and spear came from has been there for so long we tried to open it up, but it was no use it was all heavily guarded to the point we wondered what or who secured the place so heavily. Shin. Yay magic is strong don't get me wrong, but why try and get it open? Azazel. For all three factions we all confessed we wanted to know what was hidden back there, and then after 10 years of taking turns to open it, you two just show up and take it, I must admit I was a little upset about it, Shin pulled out the sword and tossed it to Azazel. Shin. Here look, Azazel held it and it was so light he could feel the magic surging through it, then it went from white to black, he looked confused and flicked it, and it sounded hollow and weak, and just looked like glass, Azazel. Weird. It's a glass sword. Shin. Dragons remember, Azazel handed it back and it went back to normal flowing with power, Shin. I think even if you did get your hands on it, you wouldn't have been able to use them, and they would have lost their power, Azazel. Mind if I see the spear? Akari. Oh, go ahead I don't mind. She handed him the spear, and the same thing happened to turn to glass he handed it back to her, and she put it on her back. Azazel. Interesting, Shin. Yeah it is isn't that right Serzichis. They all went wide-eyed realizing he caught on Azazel, then pulled out the projection, and Shin looked at him. Shin. What do you want? Serzichis to be allied with you. Shin. I don't think so, your family took something from us, and we going to do the same to you. Serzichis. Is that a threat? Shin. No, it's a promise a threat would be me saying I know where Milika sleeps. The air went cold, and then Serzichis couldn't get upset because this was more serious than it was meant to get. Serzichis. Fine look I don't want to fight or a war one no I can't fix what my ancestors did, but, in a month or two can we speak again about becoming allies. Shin. Fine see you in a month. The projection ended and he looked at the scared devils and fall in front of him. Shin. You should know everything about your enemies and I'm not joking around. He stood up and Akari did as well. Shin. We will be natural for the time being for the sake of the Yakai queen and princess, but after be warned, I might not be so friendly anymore. They nodded and then they left, and they all took a deep breath. Zenaviva. Do we leak? How does he know about Milika's sleeps? Even we don't know that. Azazel. I don't know but we need to make sure we become good enough friends with him. Arena. There's something in his eyes that looks so familiar. Tiba. I see it too, but it's possible to have a double ganger I was looking at Akari, and she looks like you Arena, personality and all. Arena. I know. They sat with their thoughts and ensured the hungover Ross was slept properly. With Shin. Akari. Why were you mean to them? Shin. I can't explain it now, but they need this I'm not letting them walk all over us and get their way until Arena's talks with them. Akari. Alright then so what are we doing tonight? Shin. Looking for the hero clan. She nodded and they took off looking for the hero clan. They spent the night flying around not making any significant signs that they were there, they then called it a night and decided to just go ahead and relax for the rest of the evening and sat together so they could gather themselves. Akari. So what did you find out from them? Shin. That my first mate was pregnant with my child and she had a miscarriage. 
Bakari. If I was you, I would come out clean, but that's not going to happen is it? Shin. No, we still don't know enough yet, Bakari. Why scare Surzichas like that though? Shin. Just cause things to lead to that they tried to figure out things from us, we only told them surface level things that would keep them on their toes, Bakari. Hum so are we going to handle this Koakoa? Shin. Probably I mean look, he pointed and the world started changing again. Shin stood up and cracked his back, Shin. Hurt them a lot don't let them get away, Bakari. Grinning you can count on me. He took off flying towards the main fight. Shin. Drag boost me, please. Drag. Sure. His marking started glowing and pulsing with each plus it was getting faster and faster. He pulled out his sword, and as Koakoa was about to hit Arena, he sliced and shattered Koakoa's spear, Shin didn't give him a moment breath and started beating him repeatedly, and then sent him flying into a wall. Arena looked at him with blood running down her face, he helped her up and put his hand on the side of her face, she closed her eyes and started crying, then passed out, he picked her up and put her on the side out of the way where she could get hurt again. He then went towards the large fox cut the restraints and hit the man using magic Magic, making him fly a few meters away. He saw a large number of thunder clouds swirling around the area and watched as a large amount of lighting was being used to attack the enemies he smiled. He then got the rest of Sona's peerage, who was knocked out and brought them to Arena, and they watched him slowly bring the queen back and lay her in front of them. He checked her body, and she was fine. Shin then covered his hands with scales, and it looked like the boosted gear. Then they saw Akari flying in the distance. Akari. Nude I did it I fit by myself and won. Shin. That's great smiling I'm proud of you. She flew into his arms and hugged him. Bakari. Oh she's beautiful. Shin. Hm well it looks like the rest of the hero clan is beaten. Saji looks like he did well in his training he took most of them out I can feel his power from here even. He heard some movement and looked back and saw the queen sitting up. Shin. Hey you, okay. She nodded and smiled at him. Can you take me home? Shin. Sure. He picked her up and brought out his wings and flew to the temple as he flew he felt something weird, but brushed it off, they met Kunu who was standing outside, waiting for one of them to come back. She saw Shin and Akari flying towards her, and she started running towards them, grabbed her mother and cried. Kunu crying mother. She hugged her back while the two watched. Shin. Whisper I don't think I got her name once. Akari. Whisper Yasaka. Shin. Whisper thanks. She lightly hit his arm and then watched as the mother-daughter was reunited with each other. Isaka then looked at Shin and Akari and hugged them. Isaka. Thank you for saving me. Shin. Well the devils that are going to come and check up on you later did most of the work we just helped them, I know it's sudden, but by any chance do you have a scroll belonging to the dragon clan? She looked surprised and then smiled. Isaka. I was told you'll both be coming one day I just wish it could have happened during better times. Shin. It's alright we can come and visit if you want. They both nodded and were taken to a temple when the door opened they saw a large number of symbols as they walked in the devils, and as Azazel were flying towards the temple they met Ararna on the way she was weakly walking towards the temple trying to get to him. Shin and Akari walked towards the symbols and touched them, and the whole area changed, and all the information went flying towards everyone in proximity. Flashback, Hendrik. Kyoko get him and Akari away from here now. They saw a large man that Shin resembles a lot screaming at them. Kyoko. Okay, come on Sora we need to get them out of here Catherine Mickey and Garo are waiting for us. Sora. Let's go. They watched as Shin fought in his mother's arms to stay. Shin. Mom no we can't leave dad. They saw a massive explosion go off that forced them forward, both Kyoko and Sora took the main amount of damage to protect the kids. They rolled and landed near Mickey Catherine and Goro. All three. Oh shit. They ran towards them and tried to get them to help. Kyoko. Bleeding out no leave us there is no helping it please take them and get them somewhere safe. Mickey. Tearing up but. Sora bleeding out it's alright it's too late for us, but please take them and get out of here. Catherine and Goro bit their teeth grabbed Shin, and Akari got on the boat and left. As the devil elders came closer another figure with large wings was walking in the middle of them, they started to send attacks towards them, but Kyoko and Sora with their last bit of energy, both sent a massive attack of water and ice towards the devil elders, and with the same attack, sent Shin and Akari away with Mickey, Catherine and Goro. Aura forced a portal open to the overworld where they landed on the beach of the Japanese countryside. They took shelter in an abandoned cabin both Shin and Akari crying for their mothers, Catherine bit her lip and used a spell to knock them out and make them sleep. Catherine. We need to lay low for a while, you two go check the area to make sure we weren't followed, and I'll watch them and start a fire so we can have some warmth. They nodded and they changed both kids were sleeping, but it looked like a different day. Hatron. I'll keep the princess here with me if we have them separated, then perhaps they can grow without the need to watch their power levels grow. Mickey. We going to wipe Lord Shin's memory again sniff. Hatron. I'm sorry Mickey I know it's hard with everything that's going on, but we need to be strong. Mickey. It's just I was looking so forward to my baby being born. Arrow. Our son or daughter would have been amazing, but you know we can't blame ourselves for leaving the nest and the fact with all the stress. Mickey. At least I have you with me. Catherine. 
make sure you two keep things well and blend in as best as possible it'll be Granny Hayato, and you two will take the Haidu name. They nodded and the scene changed again they saw Arena's parents moving next door. Then it ended everyone saw the memories shocked at what they were seeing all the devils by the door were shocked that Issei was standing in front of them. Basil. Out of breath Issei is it really you? Shin. My name is Shin, thank you Yusaka I know it is short, but we need to go we have things that need to be done. She nodded and Akari took his hand, and they were going to teleport Arena forced herself to fly toward him, and as they teleported she was taken with them and they were gone, and a chess piece was left where they stood, they tried to trace the spell but couldn't. Azizel. Yusaka what did you give them? Yusaka. I'm not sure I was just asked to hide this, and two people from the dragon clan will come, I asked them how I would know, and they said they would ask about the scroll, and not to let anyone see these markings till they arrive. They looked at the markings, but it was something they had never seen before. Roswis. This doesn't look like any form of language. Azizel. I need to tell Serzichas and we need to inform them about Arena as well. He picked up the piece while trying to get hold of them but couldn't. Azizel. Right brats we going back to the underworld. They nodded and made a portal going back to the underworld when they arrived at the Gremory territory they saw a new face sitting with the family Seraph Olsona and Ajuka were present as well. Runias. Ah good here's the rest of them it's good to see you I'm Runias the first Gremory smiles. Life 17. Mistakes have consequences. Azizel was shocked and in disbelief, realizing that she looked so young yet a long way older than he was, but this time there was important news that he needed to say, his mind running at 400 km per hour. He was on the verge of just spilling everything, but he was brought to his senses when he heard Runia's voice. Runia's. Sit down, relax you're all a mess, I can see what you want to tell my great 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 grandson something smiles. The way she smiled showed her authority over all of them, and since Azizel wasn't going to start any arguments, he had to oblige and do what she said. The room was tense, they could see she's upset about something, and they were clearly at fault it was written on her face. Azizel. Okay. There was a different type of fear they were getting from her she was nice, yet looked like she could kill you instantly they sat down, and Ria's looked for Arena, but couldn't find her she could sense her peace in the room, but she was yet to be seen with the others, and they looked like they want to talk. Arena's. Good now that you are all here, I believe you all have made a huge mistake regarding a young man named Issei. They all had to bite their tongues, knowing how badly they messed up with him, and how she brought it up, wouldn't give anyone much time to think to get a clear story across. Ernia's. Now tell me did my morals mean nothing for you to follow? If you knew what he really was he would still be with you now, but clearly, neither of you made the choice to help him. Serzichas. At the time there was nothing we could do. And Renia's sama what do you mean what he is? Rias looked down at her hands the memories of how he begged for help, yet she didn't do anything for him. She shed a few tears for him, but tried her best to not cry right now. But a few tears did escape. Ernia's. Sighs you'll figure it out. Now look at her she's guilty all of you are it's a pitiful sight to see on my family. And now you have the dragon clan making threats at you as well. Now that isn't what I wanted when I made the deal with the dragon king Kendrick Haidu. They were shocked hearing the name coming from her. And now knew the dragon king's name could have a relation to say. They all looked down thinking about it. But some didn't they looked excited and wanted to speak. Azizel. But things changed we. He was cut off by Runia's when she spoke again. And she used her power to shut them all up it was a dangerous feeling, but they all kept quiet to not make her angrier. Ernia's. Hold it I'm not done yet. Azizel's and Aviva Kibasaji and the rest of Sona's peerage looked confused but still wanted to talk about what they just learned. Ernia's. I'm sure you've seen the boy with a ring of mine. Serzich's. Yes we have, I've been meaning to ask why does he have your ring. Ernia's. Think of it as an exchange. He gave me this, and I gave him my ring so I can get hold of him when I want. She pulled out the engagement ring they gave Issei and placed it on the table. They all looked confused to why she had its Rias wanted to shed tears, but forced herself not to, she didn't want to believe what was going to happen. Rias. He told me to give you this back it clearly didn't mean that much to you, so he gave it back. Rias' heart started beating fast Rias had his engagement ring and gave it back to them. Rias. Let me show you something I have a feeling you have questions. She took out a device, and it showed a projection of Issei being tortured on Amazon Lily. Ernia's. When you banished him you sent him to Amazon Lily, they found him, and they had him, and they tortured him for a month. She showed them pictures and videos of him either being beaten, burnt, stabbed and even crucified, and then used as a target to the pictures of him sitting in his cell. They couldn't help hearing him scream in pain when they stabbed him, and used him for target practice they wanted to run and help him, but this was long ago already. Ernia's. Tears running where is he now? Ernia's. I don't know he was imprisoned for two days in that cell, but I thought I might as well show you why they let him free well one of the reasons. The video started and he started playing his instruments. 
Bria's properly started crying seeing how much they hurt him the other they had to hold back some tears, realizing they hurt him a lot, then Alana couldn't even look at the video she made him trust her, and then she threw it in his face, when he needed that trust to come back to him, she felt ashamed for her actions, same along with Serafo Serzic's Grafia and Ziotix, the others were feeling guilty they couldn't even help him when he needed their help, even the others they didn't like the way he was being punished more when he was innocent, Bernia's. As you can see, he is alive and well. The last thing he did for Hancock was defeat some devils that wanted every woman and child dead on the island he killed all of them, and he killed them before most of them even reached the shoreline. She showed the video she could get her hands on, and showed them the video of Hancock, asking for his help and how he handled it. Showing a completely different level of power than what they last knew him for. They were impressed he still did something nice for others, they watched as he killed the men without hesitation, and had a lot more power than he's shown before. Ernie is. After that I sat down with him, and we had a talk here's what he had to say. The clip played. Ernie's. Is. Issei, do you know who I am? Issei. Given the red hair I would say Gremory, but your eyes say different. Ernie is. You can call me Runia's Gremory or even Nee's Gremory whichever you feel comfortable with, I'm the first Gremory to live. Issei. So I'm going to guess about maybe one or two generations. Ernie's. I like the way you are thinking, but when I say first, I mean the first generation you have way more happening before me. Issei. Cool then I think I can give this to you. He opened his hand and they saw ring come out he walked over to her and placed it in her hands. Ernie's. Confused the Gremory King's ring why do you have it? Issei. I was engaged to the current heritress of Gremory, Ria's, and after recent events I don't think I can keep it, I'm sorry, but I don't think I'll ever trust your family again, they really hit me where it hurts. Ernie's. It's alright to say I have been planning to see them before Ria's is made the head, but I think I'll keep this and show it to them when I see them. Issei. If they haven't figured out that I'm alive yet and they ask how you got it just say they broke him. He looked sad all of them could see it. Hancock. Is something wrong? Issei nodded and explained recent events and how they hurt him without even questioning it or trying to prove him innocent and how he was engaged to Ria's in the first place, then his last month on Amazon Lily. Gloriosa. Barely even 17 yet such a horrible life, I'm sorry on behalf of the woman of the island. Issei. What can you do about its life is life it's what you make of it really. Ernia's. You're right but I don't believe my family to be so cold perhaps a reminder of the real big boss is needed. Issei. Do what you want I'm over it I had two days to put it past me. Hancock. But are you over it? They saw as he looked at Hancock for a bit then spoke again. Issei. Time will tell but right now I don't know. He sat back down and cracked his back, they all know how much he used to crack his bones but this time the crack sounded painful. Gloriosa. Where do you plan to go after this? Issei. I don't know I think get a clear story with my biological human parents, then go see my grandmother, maybe I don't know she hasn't picked up my calls recently. Ernie's. Biological human parents. You do know you're not human right? Issei. Yay but I was one. Hancock. Issei she means you've never been one. Issei. What, no I'm pretty sure I've been human. Ernie's. What was your family name before you met my family? Issei. Hi do. Ernie's. I think go talk to your parents because Haidu is a family name related to the dragon clan to my knowledge. Issei was shocked this was never heard of before he fell over looking at his hands. Ernie's. Issei look at me. He looked up at her with confusion and disbelief written on his face. Ernie's. You might actually be more special than you think, smiling. The clip ended and they were shocked beyond belief Serzic's Serafal and Ajuka didn't think to look into him at all. The rest were shocked to see that he was this much of an important figure. Then Alana. It makes sense as to why his supposed parents said what they said that day, we really didn't know what was going on. Ernie's. As you have seen you hurt him a lot and nearly ruined an amazing chance to have with the dragon clan, I'm sure you all know how strong they are, and if you find them strong now imagine when they are in their prime they still young so this isn't their full potential. Serzich's. Shocked but how? None of this makes sense, how did he even survive? Why didn't he let us know did we really push him that far away, I mean I know what we did, there's no forgiving it, but still. Ernie's. Sad he's really not coming back, is he? Ernie's. I can't account for his actions and how he survived, but he's been on a journey for the past few months, this is hardly the first month let me show you something the same he freed Amazon Lily. The clip played and they saw how he had to make Hancock blush, and she kissed him, Ria's heart sank when she saw him smile, she couldn't believe what she was seeing she wanted it to be a lie, but deep down, she knew that it was the truth. Ernie's. Then there's this. She showed them a picture of them in bed, none of them could believe what they were seeing, neither of them expected him to move on so quickly. Ernie's. Nothing happened with them though. But now you are looking at the first person she ever shared a bed with it was to make up for how her people treated him sure it wasn't much, but he even knows how big of a deal it is for her to share a bed with him. Then she showed them the picture with her in the bed and the picture of them as well. Ernie's. 
he proceeded to spend a few months there before he left. Hancock did tell me that he's become a very close friend of his, and she offered marriage, and he said he has someone that comes first, but he promised he'll call her when things are fixed. They were in disbelief that he managed to have the snake queen under his finger, and even had marriage on the table with her as well, but when Riaz heard that someone was coming first, she couldn't help but get anxious thinking that he was talking about her. Riaz. Could he be talking about me? Riaz. Then I don't know what happened for a few weeks, but it was around the time he and the girl he's currently with took the things from the caves in Hawaii. She showed pictures of the new looks how they disguised themselves so they wouldn't be seen and how they at least had some fun while in Hawaii exploring everything. Zenaviva. Didn't she say her name is Akari? Ernias. Hmm after they took their things from the caves, I called him and he had this to say. The clip played. Ernias. Is say you there? Is say. Yeah I'm here what's going on? Ernias. Well, I woke up this morning all well and dandy, and the devil community is freaking out because a relic mine was raided and some powerful items were stolen tell me by any chance are you in Hawaii? They say. Yeah that was us. Ernias. Us. Akari. Hi. Ernias. Wait a second. The ring let out a projection and they could see Issei and Akari next to him. Ernias. Want to explain the look? Issei. Well, some discoveries were made, I'm a prince and she's a princess of the dragon clan, but it seems five families made up the whole clan mine was one, and hers was another we found a book and a few things that were left for us with notes. Akari. Hi I'm Akari Furman. Ernias. Hello dear I'm Runias Gremory, but wow I'm in shock I never expected to see the two of you together, but what all did you take? Issei. Well one was a sword that belonged to my late father. Akari. Smiling and the other was my late mother's spear. They showed her the items and she was impressed by them. Ernias. Well, then I must say I didn't expect two members of the world's strongest clan in the underworld to be making progress this quickly. They say. Hmm, but we have a few documents that need to be read through then maybe we can get a bigger picture. We are missing a lot of memories ourselves so right now we may still be at step one. Ernias. By any chance do you have pictures of your time there? They say. You want to make some memories of when we brought the clan back to glory. She nodded and smiled. Akari. I'll send them to Issei to send you I oversaw photos. Ernias. I can't wait to see the devils start to freak out when you come back into power. Issei. Why are you so interested in our clan anyways? Ernias. Your clan was strongest for a reason some considered your clan gods and they were unstoppable, but one day it changed, your clan was wiped off the face of the earth and underworld not a trace, so imagine my excitement when I saw you. Issei. Wow, but I'm going to start putting things together and keep you updated on things, and I'll let you know what happens. Ernias. You better I still have a bone to pick with your father so I'll have you finish it for me. Issei. How about when we empower again? She nodded and disappeared. Lip end. Ernias. So my deal is still a possibility, but she is now the current queen of the dragon clan, and he is the king they are very powerful creatures they will even put your dragons to shame he just happens to have the boosted gear with him, why do you think his power was so different and the way his body reacted with it, that's a special dragon species that originated from the same time as the original satan faction they have always been stronger than us, and now with them in the picture say bye bye to the devil faction, I have a good feeling he's going to get some serious payback, they couldn't believe what they were seeing and hearing he's done so much since he's gone, and now, he's more dangerous than ever. Serziches. Then I suppose that explains how Shin knew things about us. But I want to talk to him I need to see if I can get him on our side even if we serve him, I need to protect my family and make it up to him. Azizel. Oh crap. They all looked at him holding his face. Azizel. He said, or she mentioned something about them being married, but they had their memories wiped for protection something along those lines. Rias. Monotone so she's his wife. Ernias. Hey wait I didn't know that let me call him and see what he's up to. She started the call and they got excited and all kept quiet. They saw his face appear. Shin. Not a good time, Akari get more towels while I try and stop the bleeding. The cry. Here I gotta talk to Runias while I start to heal her. Shin out of breath what's up it's a really bad time. Runias. Sorry but why didn't you tell me you changed your name? Shin. Sorry about that I honestly forgot, but my name is now Shin Issei Haidu, I kept Issei because it was my name for so long it feels wrong to just remove it completely, plus I feel I'd have an identity crisis if I didn't keep it. Ernias. Fair enough, and what's this about you being married? You could've told me about that don't you think? Shin. Well after our last call we went to sleep, and then while I was reading the logs from our protectors, we found the marriage certificate from when we were kids, the timeline is going the night we got married the attack happened, and then we were separated right now we are a couple, but we don't plan of breaking off the marriage, because it was the last thing our parents wanted. Ernias. What about Hancock? Shin. 
I honestly considered sharing at first I was against it, but I had to make that choice, Akari is my number 2, and Hancock is my number 3, there's one more girl I want to talk to, but that's for another time when I bring the dragon clan back into power. They then heard a voice in the background. Akari in the background dude she's stable the bleeding stopped, Shin. Okay I'll be there now, if you see Riaz and the others tell them when we teleported to our home for the time being, Irina forced herself to come with us, and since it's a different teleporting method, and only take the body not the object making her a devil, so we just healed her, but she's going to be in recovery for a while, Irina's. Noted, before you go did you hear Riaz had a miscarriage? Shin. Deep breath yeah I heard whenever you see them tell them to make sure Roswes doesn't drink anything she can't handle her alcohol. But when she told me my heart broke the woman I love had to deal with that without me, and there was nothing I could do to change it. But look don't expect me to run to her now things are going down that need my focus right now I'll beat myself up about it later. I still don't know who or what I truly am yet, and tell Grafia to get her to relax dragon babies are worse than devil babies, if there is too much stress. In the environment it can case a miscarriage, but if the father such as myself isn't around the baby will die because like devils that need their parents magic to feed on dragon babies, if a boy will take after their father, and if girl the mother, so I'm assuming our son died because I wasn't present, she shouldn't beat herself up about it I'm not angry with her more myself. Ernie is, well that's for you to figure out enjoy the evening, I know you going to spend it reading that log book, Shin. Ha ha, funny, we going to Amazon Lily next there's something for us in the middle of the volcano, so we should be there for the next few days or months, depending on what happens this side. Ernie is. I might just pop by again. Shin, your choice see you see you later everyone else I know you there you're not fooling me with that. He put down the call and she looked at them. Ernie is, well, I know where my journey is going again, but don't think you can just go to Amazon Lily I know that's what you think it's not going to end well, Hancock is very dangerous especially towards the men, so you might have trouble even getting near the island before they shoot you down. Ria's got up and just went to her room. She lay on her better heart racing as a still loved her, and he was also hurt by the pregnancy, but the fact he still loved her was all she wanted to know and hear, she knew she can make it up to him, but he was so far away, and she knows she won't see him for a while still. The others were happy to know he was alive, but the threat of him being an enemy was still there, and they didn't know how to deal with that. But Shin and Akari a few minutes earlier, they landed in the living room of the cabin they were staying at, and as they landed they saw Irina on the ground bleeding out, both immediately went into action to try and help her to stop the bleeding, the injury wasn't as bad, but the bleeding was still bad, while covering up the injury his ring from Runia started glowing, so he had to stop and take the call, and Akari took over when he was done, but the call he sat down and looked at Irina on the ground he could hear her heartbeat still beating strong and well, but it still scared him to see her like this, Akari. You brave still saying you love Ria's in front of all of them. She placed the food in front of him, and the steam went up his nostrils making him cough. Shin. Well, I spoke the truth, right now I may not trust her, I want to see her actions before I even think of letting her back into my life. Bakari. Fair enough, so what do the book say? We can look at them while we wait for Irina to wake up, and I know for a fact the book of Ventus hasn't changed. He looked at her and remembered that the Book of Ver was actually meant to say the Book of Ventus, it was the family her mother was a part of very powerful wind users, and it gave her some backstory to her history, but they could read that book cover to cover nothing was hidden, the log books on the other hand looked very different, and now this scroll as well, Shin. Well, the scroll is a source of power only we would be able to take power from it, and other factions and clans won't be able to, but that's not what concerns me what does, is that the notes are becoming less and less, we not even getting all the logs anymore, even when I shine light behind the pages they really are blank, we might have reached the end of the log books, the Kari, and the box that you found, Shin, still nothing that can unlock it, I wonder what it is the seals haven't gotten any weaker if anything they look stronger, the Kari, oh well maybe we find something on Amazon Lily, Shin, Maybe and I'm doubtful that they would come to Amazon Lily Hancock will shoot them down if they are not careful. Akari. Well lead up I think we can go to the underworld tomorrow or in the next week depending on her, I'm so excited. Shin. Catherine really never took you. Akari. Nope not at all never even let me learn magic. Shin. Well then, you're in for a fun time it's a nice place, now tell me have you been practicing your dragon senses? She grew a blush and looked away from his eyes. Shin. Akari. Akari. Blushing ah no, I haven't you see I was getting a bit too involved with being a shrine mate and all, Shin. Fine I'll let you off this time next time it's punishment, Akari. Worried and what's that, Shin. I tickle you till you peer start crying, Akari. Shocked you wouldn't, Shin. You want to test me, Akari. No, no, fine, I promise I'll be working hard, Shin, good. They chuckled and continued eating getting the logs ready for them to read and put together, he kept looking at Arena to make sure she was fine in between, but she was still sleeping soundly. Chapter end, let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part.
Also check out my other video that has been shown in left. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day. Bye.